So we are now getting into 3.1. Hope everything's going good with you guys. Again, remember if you need to see me anything, uh, Mondays 6 to 7 uh, through the Collaborate uh, or email me. I can possibly send you something through the email too. Um, 3.1 is about, uh, chapter 3 is about functions. Okay, and we've already talked about some about functions. We're going to be talking about graphing functions and what to do with those graphs during this chapter. Um, now remember, what makes something a function is that for every x value, you get exactly one y value. So they have a whole section on uh, plotting points to find the picture of the graph. And again, remember I told you we're going to use our graphing calculator a little bit more, and so we want to be able to plot these things into your calculator. Okay, so it's just simple graphs. Okay, remember this is a square root function. We did that last time. Okay, we have a line. So if you put y is equal to mx plus b, it's going to give you a line. Quadratic, which is squared. Cube, showed you how to do a cube the other day. Absolute value, showed you how to do that. Here's your square root. And you also have what's known as a cube root. Okay, this is a cube root. And the easiest way to do that on your calculator is if you go to math, the math button here, math, and there is your cube root function right there. Okay, so you can put that into your graphing calculator also and get your graph. These are your basic functions. Okay, this comes out of section 3.1. This is out of the book. Got a copy here. I need you, we want you to be able to identify and do a picture, and we're going to use your calculators to do that on this section when you're doing your homework. Okay. Now, what makes these functions? Well, for every x value, every x value there's a y. Every x value there's a y. Every x value there's a y. For every x value there's a y. For every x value there's a different y every time. Okay. Now, there is what's known as a vertical line test. Okay. Vertical line test. Okay, this is a test that we can use on pictures to tell whether or not something's a function. Okay? The rule is this, if I can draw more than if I draw a vertical line and it touches more than once, then it's not a function. Okay? So, if you look at all these, all of these are functions because these go in your calculator and they're functions. Okay? So, notice there's a vertical line touches once, once once, 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 once. They only touch one time. Every time I draw a vertical line, it only touches once. Those are all functions, okay? But if I draw something that looks like this, there's a function, it's a sideways parabola, right? And we draw through here, notice two touches. This is not a function. So what about a circle? Function? or not a function, not a function, because if I draw a vertical line, I touch twice. So anywhere I can touch twice using only a vertical line, okay, and only one vertical line at a time, okay, then it is not a function if it touches more than once, okay, and those are the things we want to be able to handle, okay. So what if I give you something like this? Is this a function? Yes, okay. So if I wanted to know if these are functions or not, functions, well that's a yes. If I draw vertical lines, notice anywhere I draw one vertical line I get one touch, function. Now we get to pictures like this, okay? Notice this open circle, that means it doesn't count. Closed circle does, correct? We talked about open and closed circles before. So this is still a function, okay? This graph is your rational function graph. This has a spot where none of them ever touch. So these do not touch, so this is a function. Okay? Now, all of these are functions. Okay? We can give you some other ones. You'll see some other ones. But as A, if you can't play in the calculator, it's probably not going to be a function. Okay? But I showed you how to tell whether something's a function a minute ago. So, if I was to turn this sideways, not a function. Not a function. Not a function. Notice I draw a line here, it touches twice, correct? This would still be a function. Okay? Now, the other thing we need to talk about in this section is domain and range. Okay? Domain, again, remember, is your x values, your range are your y values. 
already talked about that earlier in a different unit. Okay, so when we talk about functions, we can find its domain. Now, in this case, the domain is your x values. What x values did this cover? Well, this arrow is going forever to the left. This arrow is going forever to the right, which means my domain is all real numbers. Now, my range is a little bit different. Okay, my range, notice this arrow is going all the way down. So it goes forever down. But there's a top point. Here's my top point. It's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my range goes from negative infinity, that's going down, all the way up to 5. And that 5 is included. Whoops. Infinity is never included, so it's parentheses. Okay? Now, some of these get a little tricky, like this one. Domain. These arrows are going up, but they're also going out as they go up. So since it goes forever this way and it goes forever this way, as it goes up, it's all real numbers. Range, there is a lower point. The lower point's here at 3. High point is infinity. So it's 3 to infinity, and 3 is included. Okay. Now, we get to something like C. Okay. C, we have this gap that we have to deal with. Now, where do we have to deal with it at? Well, notice this arrow is going up forever, but it also goes out forever. So this thing is going forever that way, and this is going forever this way. Now, because these two dots line up on top of each other, but one's open, one's closed, so it's a function, there is no gap as I go across the x-axis. Everything on this x-axis has a y value. Everything over this x-axis also has a y value. So it is still all real numbers. Now the range has a low point. The low point here is at 2. The high point, infinity. Now there's a gap here, but because of this gap and this over here being at the same y level, this takes over this. So my range is from 2 to infinity. Okay. Now the rational function domain range is a little tricky because there's what's known as asymptotes. Remember we talked about those asymptotes? Oh, we talked about, we'll talk about them a little bit later. Sorry, we haven't gotten to that yet. Okay. So uh, those asymptotes is where it doesn't touch. Okay. Those graphs will not touch there. So when we talk about forever to the left and forever to the right, there's this one value at 1 that the x value does not have a graph. So my domain is negative infinity all the way to 1. 1 is not part because it's open. It's technically going to be an open union 1 to infinity. Now the range, up and down, it goes forever down, goes forever up. But there's one place right here on the x-axis that there is no y value for. So it's going to be negative infinity all the way up to 0, union 0 to infinity. And there we have our domain and my, our range on those problems. All right. And those are also listed on some of your problems. So let's look at one more problem. Let's look at this problem here. Okay, it says, use this graph of a function. Notice it passes vertical line test. So we're good. Okay, since it passes vertical line test, it's a function. Find its domain and range. Domain. Well, farthest left. Well, it stops right here. The farthest left is going to be at 2, negative 2. Farthest right, it goes on forever to the right. So it's going to be negative 2 to infinity. And when we talk about the range, it's going forever down, but it only goes up to this point at 4. So it's negative infinity to 4. Always lowest number to the highest, farthest left to the farthest right. And there we have domain and range of these functions.